Hello, everyone, and welcome back in. This is episode 02, volume 2 of our Yag Panther project. Of course, in episode number one, we constructed our Yag Panther model, the Ming kit. We added the Zamerit using epoxy sculpt. If you missed any of that, just head back to episode number one, take a look at that, and then continue on with episode two here. Well, episode number two is going to be focused all about the painting, and well, it's going to be a little bit of a fit and starts here. You'll see that as we get through here. First off, a layer of Mr. Surfacer 1200 as our primer. I'll be using Real Color from AK, their late war German set. Duncan Gelb, and I'm going to lighten it just a little bit with some cream white. And you might notice the round one, <laughs> a little bit of a clue that we might be doing this maybe more than once. First off though, everything's going fine here. Just add the base color, the Duncan Gelb, lighten slightly, and I'll add a few kind of cloud patterns on this as well. Everything's laying down just nice as it should. Let me try to explain what happened here. In my eye, I had this kind of a conceptual idea of what I wanted the camouflage to look like on this model. So as I continue to work on here, adding the red, brown, and the green, what ended up happening is the colors, the camouflage pattern itself was just too defined. It was too dense, at least in my eye. And so we'll get to a point here in just a second where I decide, you know what? I actually slept on this overnight. I got up the next morning and I said, you know what? I think I need to readdress this. And the only way I could figure out how to do that would be, well, exactly, going back in and starting over with a repaint. So the repaint starts, well, basically by repainting the model in the Duncan Gelb color just to get everything back to where it needs to be to start off with. And then the idea on this time is that I wanted the camouflage pattern to be a little bit looser, a little bit lighter, maybe a little more faded, a little more random. So we'll redo the base, and now we'll start working on the camouflage colors. And I'll split the screen here, and you'll see that maybe there's not a lot of difference between round one and round two. Round one, or round two, the, the redo is on top, round one is on the bottom. So you can kind of watch this side by side here, but I think there's enough of a difference here, at least by the time I was completed with this process of painting and then repainting, I felt a little more comfortable with the camouflage and more ready to, I guess, move forward. The sequence of colors is exactly the same between the first try and the second try here. So red brown is the first camouflage color coming back in with the green as the second camouflage color. By now, I think you can start to see a little bit of a difference between the two two attempts. So again, the first attempt on the bottom, second attempt, the redo is on the top. Here we are with our freshly repainted Yag Panther. And yeah, in my heart, it feels a little bit better. It's a little closer to what I had in my mind's eye. Does it make a big difference? Uh, who knows? That's subjective. The next question is, well, Rick, how often do you do this? How often do you repaint your models such as this? And the answer would be, as often as I feel like I need to. Basically, if I'm not happy with the way things are starting out, I don't want to fight it throughout the process. It's much easier and much better for me just to go ahead, take care of it, and then move forward from there. While I have my colors out, I'll just paint a few of these accessories. The road wheels, of course, there's a ton of those. Gave everything just a quick coat of a black rubber color, just basically loosely all around, and then I'll come back into the centers, and I just use one of these architectural circle templates. Makes a quick mask, just put the Dunkel Gelb in there, and I'll come back a little bit later and add the camouflage into those centers. <laughs> okay, well, we've got that behind us now. We have our model painted. Let's continue on. Next up, let's add a few decals. These are from the Echelon set, and this is the process. No varnishes, no gloss coat, nothing like that. This is directly over the paint, the real colors paint. Just add a little bit of setter, and then let's pull off the decal, get those in place. And then once those are lined up, then let's come back with a little bit of softener. And then I just left, leave this alone now. Just walk away. And in this case, it was overnight before I started messing with the surfaces again. Just a brief moment for me to say thank you to my Patreon. If you do like this channel and would like to support it further, I do have a Patreon page. The link is in the description below. In return, early viewing of these videos, progress photographs, special feature short videos, a Discord server, and a lot of fun. Please consider checking it out. Thank you. Next morning, come back in. I thought, well, let's go ahead and set the tone here, maybe with a little bit of heavier weathering on the lower hull. This is a little bit different than I usually do it. I tend to, I tend to actually finish with the lower hull for some reason, but this time I thought I'll go ahead and start. I want to go ahead and use some of this acrylic paste from AK. I'm just going to dab that on here. I like these two colors together that I'll be using, dry ground and the dark earth. So first the dry ground, then I've cut up a little bit of that twine just into small pieces, and this will be 
kind of clumped grass, kind of embedded into that mud there, just kind of poke it around and get that into place. paste is still wet, the dry ground is still wet, but I'll come back in with that dark earth color now and just kind of dab some of that here and there just to give it a little bit of color variation and a little bit of that heaviness due to damp ground and such because I want this to look kind of heavy and mean. Basically the same process on the road wheels just with a little bit of a more I don't know, light application. I just want little clumps of dirt here and I don't want to cover the whole thing up. So just tapping along with some of that dry earth. I won't be adding any of the dark earth because I'll be weathering these along with the remainder of the vehicle to make sure everything starts tying together. Well, here we go. Speaking of weathering, bring out the oils. Get the color palette ready to go and let's get started. Always one of the hardest parts is just getting started. So I just pick a corner and here we go. Starting to establish a few patterns here and there, a little bit of color. The color on the brush, the paints, well, they're basically dry, just coming almost straight from the palette. Use a very clean brush, just, just a dab of paint, put it around some of those surface details, just kind of tap it in there. Steps are very, very simple. Just apply a little bit of color, come back with a soft brush, blend it back in, rinse and repeat. So at least the way I approach painting with oils, it's almost like a two-pronged two approach. On the one hand, I'm working on to accentuate the surface details, adding the shadows. Maybe it's a three-pronged approach. I'm also adding weathering effects with the darker colors, the grease and the grime and the dirt and mud and dust. And then I also want to impact or enhance some of the camouflage colors. So in this case, just dabbing with a little bit of the green in some of those camouflaged areas. And these will just start adding some of those tonal variations that are so appealing to the eye. So once again, just a few drops of color into those spaces, come back with a clean, dry brush and just work those into the color, work those into the surface. I think one of the reasons that I enjoy scale modeling so much is because, well, each project is its own unique triumph and tragedy, I guess. Um, you know, who would have thought that I would have to repaint the camouflage twice on this one? That's certainly a, a challenge, if nothing else. And then secondly, when I started adding the oil colors on the top here, I was not sure still that the balance was right. It looked very out of place, looked too dark, too stark, wasn't sure where it was going. Finally now, I feel like the picture's starting to come together. The base colors, the new camouflage, I think is working well. Now that the oils are starting to add some richness and saturation to the colors and some shadowing and definition around the details, I can start to see the picture come together. I can start to relax a little bit more and enjoy the remainder of the project. about this point and I would say again we're about the 80% percent 
finished here, but it's, it's starting to look good, but I'm really beginning to wonder how it will tie in with the rest of the model. Maybe I'm just curious, maybe I'm just impatient, I don't know. But I think it's about time to leave this section alone, the roofs area, and we'll move on to same, say the side plates here. We'll start working on those and see how this all starts to come together. Well, this project has certainly been full of firsts, or should I say seconds. So the second time that I've applied Zamirit, which means this is the second time that I've painted Zamirit. And I really wasn't sure how to approach this, whether simply ignore it altogether and just weather the model or to really emphasize it because of the pattern and the texture. In the end, I decided on kind of a combination of the two. So using the colors of the camouflage, I decided to go ahead and shadow the pattern. So green on green, red on red, a little bit of light yellow on the light yellow, just to kind of bring out the pattern, but not make it too, too dark. Now the first thing I wanted to avoid at all costs was to do any sort of like say a wash over these surfaces. That's not my intention at all. It should be noted that the paint that I'm applying is very limited. It's very, very dry coming almost directly from the palette. And once the colors are applied and almost little dots here and there, I just kind of blend them together with that, that soft brush. So after a little bit of work, we're finally getting there. It's starting to come together. <laughs> this is not 80%, it's a little less than that, I'm sure. But once again, I kind of want to see the whole picture. So I think it's about time that I go ahead and paint some of those tools and accessories just to kind of bring a little bit of these details into life. I'll just lay out a few acrylic colors here that I'll be using on those tools. And in terms of painting tools, I think there's it tends to be two camps, those who spend a lot of time adding tons of detail and wood grain, and then there's those like me who are basically lazy and just add some base colors, maybe a quick wash with some oils, a few highlights here and there, and we call it good. And I could see how painting the tools at this step might seem like a simple, kind of unnecessary process, but for me, it, like I said, I will, I'd like to see the whole picture starting to come together at the same time. And now that those tools are painted and the accessories are painted, now I can start to see areas where I can add a little bit more weathering or a little bit more emphasis on certain colors and start really bringing this up, bring the details and the weathering all up together and bringing this closer to a conclusion. Yeah. As long as we were talking about tools and before I forget to do this, I might as well add just a little bit of polish to some of these areas. Just a little bit of wear here, a little bit of metallic finish. Just a number two pencil, just rub it on. I'll come back and just buff it a bit with my finger. And I guess as long as we're working on some polishing, let's take care of those road wheels, those interior road wheels especially. They get polished up the rims do from the friction from the tracks. So now it's just a matter of trying to pull everything together from the ground up. Of course, we already painted the hull using that dry ground and the dark earth texture pastes. We've got a light stippling of the dry ground on these road wheels. And now using oil paints, shadow brown and burnt umber, which match nicely with that dark earth texture paste, they're starting to add some of those mud effects.
Speaking of the ground up, well, here are our tracks, and they're still in one piece. Miracle of Miracles. Thank you. Well, those were painted with a combination mixture of German gray and red brown, and after that's dried, now just application of the dry ground mixture, slightly thinned out with some water, and then the dark earth just brushed over the top as well, also thinned out. And this is one of those, you may not ever notice this, but it makes me feel good. Just to give it a little bit of a metallic sheen, I've got some dry steel pigment powder, and I just rub some of that across some of those high points to give just a slight metallic sheen to the tracks. While that paste on the tracks is drying, I might as well work on a few other details here and there. A little bit of acrylic paint, and I'm just kind of picking out some of these details, kind of highlighting some of the edges, maybe around here where the Zemeric might have chipped off. Not so much showing a lot of damage, but mostly just giving a little highlight. Using those same acrylic colors, just a few light touches here and there, just to replicate some scuffs and chips and marks and a little bit of edge highlighting perhaps, just to kind of brighten things up and add a little definition here and there. And if you recall from the very first episode, I was skeptical of whether or not those single link tracks were going to work from the kit. And I had a set of Fruel model tracks in the background. But luckily, the single link tracks worked. But I'm going to steal a few of these links here from the Fruel model kit, give them a bath and burnishing fluid. And it couldn't be simpler than this. Just take them out of the fluid. I think the color for spare track links is perfect the way they are. I don't need to do anything to them. Just plop them onto the side of the tank here and let's move on. I want to add some retention pins here. So I don't know if I plugged them up or they didn't go all the way through, but I couldn't stick my wire through there. So I'm going to, need to drill those out just a, with the finest of little drill bits here. Hopefully I don't break anything. Then I'll make some little pins from wire. Just bend a little bit of wire over there, nothing fancy. Kind of stick those in there. I'll come back and repaint those. And there we go. Harkening back once again to the very first episode, we spent some time redoing the foliage loops, making them out of wire, putting some pre-drilled holes in there and securing them. And the reason is for this right here. I wanted to add this wire for the foliage, and I knew doing this on those photo etch pieces was, was going to be a disaster. They were just going to pop right off. So I needed to make something that was a little bit more robust. Even though I had soaked the wire in some burnishing fluid, there's still a few areas that either the burnishing fluid gets, I guess, knocked off or didn't take, and so I need to take care of that with a little bit of paint just to get rid of those shiny spots. This will bring us to the conclusion of episode number two, and like I said in the beginning, what a long and winding road. And, well, you got your money's worth, right? You got two paint jobs in the beginning. And, yes, you got to see how actually don't do everything right the first time. I hope you got something out of this episode. I hope even watching my mistakes and recoveries from mistakes, maybe that was helpful as, as well. Just as a reminder, if you do like this channel and would like to support it further, I do have a Patreon page, and that link is in the description below. Of course, hit that like and subscribe button. That does a lot for this channel, and I do thank you for that. And so looking forward, uh, what's next? Uh, honestly, I don't know. I do believe I'll make a scenic base. We'll take you along for that ride. There's a few finishing touches I'd like to tackle on the video and maybe a figure who knows so until then take care guys thanks for watching and of course happy modeling we'll see you soon